Tesla acts in very, very strange ways, and ball lightning is a, is an example of that. Uh, I mean, I saw a, a video. I think it was um, l last night who, uh, with some guy who had uh, f filmed this huge uh, thunderstorm coming in, and besides the clouds, uh, uh, kind of ex external to the clouds, were these uh, two or three different balls that kind of popped up out of nowhere and, and traveled kind of just around. It looked basically it looked like a you know a traditional I guess UFO sighting basically. Exactly. Exactly. In fact, I, I suspect that many UFO sightings are not not all necessarily, but but that, that some certainly are are ball lightning. <laughs> and it's a it, you know there's the phrase I don't know if, if it's in Swedish as little as in English, but uh, you, there's a phrase called a, a bolt from the blue. Hmm. Uh, it refers to oh, something happening unexpectedly. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. What it means is a lightning bolt coming from blue sky. Yeah. And you say, well, how can lightning come from a blue sky? Well, it can, and it has <laughs> recorded. It, it, you don't necessarily need clouds, although that's where most of the lightning comes from. Mm -hmm. Some, it just comes, boom, out of the sky from, I don't know, from the Van Allen belts or from where, but there's <laughs> certainly a charge in balance, and you can get bolts from the blue. Hmm. So, so these things are something that uh, defies the the laws of uh, physics, then I guess. Uh, well, it not really. It's just that there. It may well be that we don't understand exactly all of the physics that uh, is going on. We understand pretty much how plasma works in the laboratory and experiments, and we understand how it. We think we understand how it works in in the solar wind and in. In galaxy formation and in, in the atmosphere of stars, mm. but uh, you know maybe we we haven't cut it all right down to the last decimal point. Maybe we have to go back to the laboratory and and look at the real thing. Yeah. Create some ball lightning. Create to try our best to create these situations and, and replicate what we see. Ah, okay, yeah. Um, and how, how about you know uh, stuff like r regular lightning? This, but this is plasma too, correct? Lightning. Oh, sure. Um, you know, somebody once said, I, I, whether it was Tony Peratt or Hannes Alfian or Irving Langmuir, he's another one we haven't discovered, uh, mm -hmm. discussed. Yeah. Uh, another Nobel winner. Mm -hmm. uh, that. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Oh. Uh, regarding this is regarding oh, lightning. regular yeah. lightning. Yeah. That uh, sure that that uh, the only place that the plasma isn't important is on the on the surfaces of the rocky planets like. Mercury and the Earth and Mars, mm -hmm. but it's important everywhere else. And, and uh, the aurora certainly is an example of a plasma. And as you mentioned, lightning. Yeah. Lightning is very definitely plasma, and it's a it's an electrical discharge down through the oxygen and nitrogen atmosphere of Earth, yeah. ionizing those those atoms. And uh, what lightning is is a plasma in the so-called arc mode of, of operation. Hmm. There, there are three modes of operation of, of plasma. One is called the dark mode, one is called the normal glow mode, and one is arc. Okay. The examples would be very quickly, uh, mm -hmm. the dark mode is the, the uh, ionosphere of Earth. It doesn't normally glow. You, you can't see it. Mm -hmm. it. It does make some radio noise, but it's normally not visible, so people ignore it. Hmm. And then, of course, the glow mode is uh, the average neon sign, you know. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. In the glow mode. Ah. And then the arc mode is, as you mentioned, lightning, or mm. that spark that jumps between your finger and the doorknob on a on a very dry winter day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of course, electric arc welding machine. That's that's arc. That's plasma in the arc mode as well. The, mm. the thing that distinguishes the arc mode is that it it also generates ultraviolet, and as humans look at it, their eyes uh, suffer. Yeah. Hmm. So well, I mean, what? Well, what is plasma? Is it really a strong electrical field, or, or what is it? Well, plasma essentially, you know, this is a, a total oversimplification, and people who know better are probably going to yell at me for saying this, but <laughs> just to get, a, get your hand around it, yeah. plasma is essentially ionized gas. Hmm. You take gas and put it in a tube hmm. and put an electrode at one end and an electrode at the other, and, and raise one of those electrodes to a higher voltage than the other, so you've got an anode and a cathode, and you get current flowing through there, hmm. uh, you will essentially rip off some of the electrons from the outer 
valence orbits on those on those atoms. Yeah. And so you you've liberated electrons inside there, and so the electrons have a negative charge, and the remaining rest of the atom, the neutrons and protons, and remaining electrons have a an equal but opposite uh, positive charge. Ah. And so they will then, in a gas in a tube like that, they'll begin to move, and they'll respond to that those electrical anodes. Hmm. And those forces are tremendously strong. So, uh, and, and I might say too that plasma uh, is is also uh, the electrons that are in a copper wire that say run to your coffee maker. Oh. Uh, those are that's also a plasma, uh-huh. a flowing sea of charge. And the the uh, the idea uh, this is sort of a, an interesting, I think, an analogy is that you don't have to put your coffee pot at a lower point than the electrical outlet in the wall in order to get the electrons to run downhill into the coffee pot. <laughs> the electrons in a, in a wire pay absolutely no attention to gravity whatsoever. Oh, yeah, I see. That's exactly <laughs> the difference between plasma cosmology and the standard cosmology, which says gravity is the only thing that's working out there. Well, oh. if it is plasma, and we think it is, mm. uh, plasma doesn't pay any attention to gravity for the simple reason that the electric electric forces are, as I said, 10 to the 39th power stronger than gravity. Hmm. So it's not that gravity isn't out there. It's just that it's completely overpowered by the the Maxwell and Lorentz forces. Oh, okay, yeah, interesting. And, um, you, know, you know, as we were speaking of uh, different forms of of lightning, uh, I know that there is an, uh, uh, an another. I don't know if we should call it type or whatever, but that that actually um, goes upward. I, I think that these are referred to as uh, spirits or something like that, right? Oh, you're talking about the elves and and the sprites. Sprites, that's right. Sprites, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, it's exactly. Uh, the same as lightning, but it's just in a different form. The, the, the plasma is in a different shape. Uh, the uh, the altitude, of course, up, above, uh, way up in the atmosphere, the pressure is much, much less. Mm-hmm. And so the, the plasma takes on a different shape. Uh, the, the sprites are, uh, look sort of like uh, oh, the tentacles of like, a, like an octopus yeah. <laughs> hanging down. Yeah, and these are huge, and right? More of a, of a b- blue torus, like a donut shape. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. And these are but, huge, right? Absolutely, yeah. And they are uh, certainly electrical in nature. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, the the idea of the of the of the sun's the solar wind, so called, that's really a solar plasma mm-hmm. being connected down through by let's say the same mechanism that creates the aurora down into Earth. There is a definite transfer of of electricity between uh, the the sun, the, the, the solar wind, mm. down into Earth, and whether it's all via just plain old thunderstorms that we're all familiar with, or mm. whether it's by some other means of, uh, of getting that electric charge down. Uh, uh, do you have dust devils in Sweden? Do you know what I mean by a dust devil? Yeah, uh, yeah I, do. I know what you mean. We, we have them very, very seldomly here, but uh, I know what you mean. If a farmer is plowing his field and he creates some dust, once in a while you'll see that thing swirl up and it looks like a tornado or yeah. a twister or sure. <laughs> uh, the, the kind of water spout that you'd see over the ocean. Yeah, yeah. And those, those uh, they did some, uh, happened to be present here at the, in, the, in the Arizona desert when the University of Arizona and my old institute, University of Massachusetts, did some research on these dust devils. Uh, the reason they were doing it is because they, 